Hello, and welcome to this lesson which will show you how to put strategy into practice for business model innovation and for strategy planning purposes. After you have finished this training, you will be able to firstly, understand what is meant by business model innovation and secondly, understand how organizations conduct strategy planning and how to put your strategy into action. Now for the first section of this lesson, Business Model Innovation. Here you can think of Business Model Innovation as a way of responding to and capitalising on our changing world. A typical business model has six components. Three of them focus on the value proposition and include the target customer segments, the product or service offering and the revenue model, such as a monthly subscription. The other three components focus on the organization's operating model and include the industry value chain, the cost model, and finally, the organizational design. Business model innovation involves changing two or more of the six components with the aim of redefining how an organization competes in the market and ultimately leading to superior shareholder value creation. Most of management's time and resources tend to be focused on innovating only one component, such as a particular product, service or technology. But business model innovation involves collaboration across all business units in an organization. Which components of your organization's business model would you change and why? Let's look at an example. Indian spectacle lens maker Essilor has transformed its business model on numerous dimensions. It has adapted its value proposition by targeting new customers in urban areas, changing its service offering and charging higher prices in urban areas. It has also adapted its operating model by focusing on cost efficiencies and making changes to its organizational design. The effect of these business model changes has been to help fund Essilor's development and expansion into rural areas. The numbers on this slide testify that by changing some of its business model components and focusing on urban areas for 10 weeks a year, Essilo has been able to generate profit in urban areas which it intends to use to fund its development in rural areas. Let's look at some other examples of business model innovation. Firstly, low cost is not new and arguably one of the most popular business model innovations, as used at low cost airlines such as Ryanair and EasyJet. Low cost does not equate to lower margins, lower quality or trading down customers. It can be about accessing new customer segments and can require organizations to innovate in its cost base, the value chain, and its branded service offering. Secondly, Nescafe and its Nespresso coffee line experience innovated in the value chain by avoiding middlemen retailers and going direct to consumers via its own Nespresso shops and online store for coffee machine refills. Thirdly, Gillette innovated in its revenue model by offering razors cheaply and at a loss in the expectation that it would recoup its investment over time via the sale of its profitable razor blades. And finally, many organizations have moved from a product to a predominantly service delivery model, like how IBM transformed itself in the 1990s from a PC hardware vendor to one focusing on IT services. Let's look at two low-cost examples from the airline industry. Jetstar, the low-cost airline owned by Qantas, has been successful because it was a separately run business entity with a different management team to Qantas. Together with a separate low-cost fleet of aeroplanes, a clearly differentiated brand that separated its offering from the parent airline and targeting a different group of customers, the results have led to a profitable, growing airline. By contrast, the low-cost airline Song, once owned by Delta, was unsuccessful 
because it was run by the same management team as Delta, did not have a separate low-cost fleet of aeroplanes, and did not have a clear differentiation story to Delta, which caused confusion for customers. The end result was that Song was reabsorbed into the Delta parent organization. To wrap up this section, let's end with some lessons. Firstly, business model innovation can create value for an organization, even in mature or declining markets, for either an industry leader or a new entrant. Secondly, BMI should be managed like any R&D activity, with dedicated resources, a systematic approach, and with trial and error pilot projects. It is important to learn from the successes and failures of other organizations. Thirdly, new BMI models often benefit from separate incubation, just like what Jetstar did. Here, dual branding is often advisable. And lastly, successful BMI does not require breakthrough innovation. Following is usually okay, and the execution quality tends to be more decisive than the novelty of the innovation idea. In this second section of the lesson, I will address the topic of strategic planning. In a recent study, chief strategic officers were asked what the current responsibilities of their team were. The chart shows the overall results, indicating that CSOs and their teams were mostly focused on strategic planning, growth, including mergers and acquisitions, and external environment analysis. The least priority responsibilities included vendor management, post-merger integration, and identifying cost improvement opportunities. The responsibilities are still largely revenue-focused. However, it is interesting that elements such as M&A show up among the top responsibilities, indicating how the CSO role is widening in scope and responsibility. But what is strategic planning? It depends on your time horizon. Some organizations conduct annual strategic reviews, where they will typically assess changes in the competitive environment, monitor the execution of current strategy initiatives, and discuss resource plans. This type of activity usually happens at product or functional level. Secondly, business unit strategy typically has a three to five year outlook for the unit and defines the customer segments and priority geographies, together with innovation roadmaps and possible merger and acquisition opportunities. And thirdly, vision statement planning is a typical corporate strategy activity and usually has a five-year outlook. It requires the strategy planners to work with the CEO to help shape the organization's future ambitions. Here is an example of the annual planning process in a consumer goods company. The leadership team has four strategic review meetings per year. The first meeting provides the focus and strategic direction for the brand and regional functions and articulates the business's key priorities. The second meeting decides on the organization's brand priorities to inform regional and functional planning. The third meeting focuses on regional and functional plans and ensures the organization is aligned on preferred options to deliver competitive advantage. And the fourth meeting seeks to approve specific initiatives and sign off budgets and funding. So, over the course of a year, the company moves from overtly strategic discussions to taking decisions that are progressively more granular and detailed after which the planning cycle starts over again. Other organizations recognize the importance of annual planning and have sought to increase the number of strategic reviews throughout the year, effectively adopting a W approach as seen in the slide. Whereas previously a board and its strategic planners would interact with the business units only once per year, known as the V approach, the W approach requires the strategic planners to interact and receive new input from the business units on a more regular process. This is to ensure the strategic plans reflect the most up-to-date environmental information 
and that the business is able to react quicker to developments, which may affect its competitiveness. Here is a summary of the W approach as used by General Electric. As this company is a multinational conglomerate, note the introduction of regional assessments in the planning process. In the medium term, where strategic planning focuses on a three to five year outlook, it helps to channel the thinking through specific lenses in order to foster the strategic team's creativity. Such lenses can include the trends that will shape the organization's environment, business model innovation, trading up or down in specific segments, and evaluating undervalued assets within the organization. It also helps to have an external perspective and investigate business models from other industries. Having a long-term outlook means setting a vision for the organization and then translating it into strategic pillars and long-term goals. The slide articulates the vision statements for several leading companies and shows the strategic pillars and long-term goals established for Toyota and Airbus. For more information on this topic, please consult the separate Pontema training lesson on corporate vision development. Once you have completed the strategic planning process, the end results need to be put into action and understood by the people in the organization. The slide here illustrates some good practices that you may want to introduce into your own organization. Firstly, communicate and mobilize the strategy with cascading emails, memos or presentations. Next, convert the strategy into some key operational initiatives ones that can easily be remembered and recalled by all employees. Ten initiatives or fewer is the aim. Any more, and they become harder to remember. Thirdly, ensure the strategic initiatives are properly resourced and funded. Larger organizations may even be able to resource a project management team to coordinate and deliver the key initiatives. Next, Ensure a KPI dashboard is established that will enable the board to track progress against each of the strategic initiatives, which ones are on track and which ones are not. Finally, ensure that manager bonus schemes are aligned to ensuring a successful achievement of the strategic initiatives. For example, if an organization's objective is to increase its customer net promoter score, a portion of each manager's bonus payment could be tied to achieving a specific net promoter score in the future. As mentioned on the previous slide, it is important to convert your strategy into some key operational initiatives, ones that can easily be remembered and recalled by all employees. Here are 10 initiatives used by a European based telecoms company, such as best network, brand, and efficient business. These are easy for the leadership team to communicate and for employees to remember. So, in summary, what you have learned from this lesson is that most organizations can improve their strategy processes via business model innovation, more big ideas, and the creation of a clear link between the strategic plan and its execution. Organizations can refresh their strategic planning processes, stretching the time horizons for foresight, stretching the thinking methods for creativity, and by stretching the engagement model for affiliation and buy-in. It is also worth investing in operationalizing your strategy to ensure that planning turns into action. Invest in a project management team if you can. The benefits of getting it right go far beyond a good plan. Organizations develop agility and adaptiveness, and it reinforces affiliation and collaboration between the corporate center and business units. Thank you for participating, and see you next time on another exciting business training lesson from Pontema.